If you look at what has happened in the public markets, I think that there's a lot of confusion about valuations and how high they have stayed in the middle of so many recession fears. When you look at what's happening out there, do you share those concerns? Uh, we do share those concerns. What's interesting right now, if you actually look at the overall performance, there's an incredible amount of dispersion. So whilst the markets are modestly on a year-to-day basis, there are some sectors or subcategories that have dramatically outperformed. So the biggest dispersion, for example, would be large cap growth versus small cap value, you know, almost 20% dispersion between the performance of those two sectors. So it's a great time to be an active manager because there's a lot of underlying dispersion in terms of the performance. Well, does that mean that the large cap growth has a way to fall or the small cap has a ways to rise? Yeah, it's certainly something we're talking to our clients about, like diversifying the, some of those. It's been a good run looking to diversify some of those exposures through small cap, through EM, things that really, uh, you know, that, that we think there's more value there right now. Well, it's interesting you say EM as well. You had mentioned that you are coming back from a trip around the world, really, yeah. in Asia and the Middle East. Yeah. What are you seeing in terms of international opportunities? right now, or are there still too many fears about the road ahead? Look, I think um, it's, it's, it's complicated, especially, I would say, in Europe, the performance there has been pretty strong, and people are, are investing in that market. I think Asia, it's really case by case. Some of the geopolitics is really starting to play into people's uh, thinking around how they allocate capital. You know, if I think about all the conversations I had while I was on the road, you kind of break it down into three buckets. One was a lot of conversation around the path of U.S. interest rates, are we going to have a recession or not have a recession, kind of U.S. macro. Second was really the banking system, how systemic this could be, is this it, is, the, uh, is there a second shooter drop? Um, and then, uh, then the third is, is geopolitics, and it's certainly influencing who, um, how people um, allocate capital around the world with certain, uh, and it's both like where do you raise the assets and where, and where do you invest the assets and where do you raise the liabilities and matching up. What about the first of those problems here, recession views? When is there a recession? How deep is it? What is the view from the top today? Look, our, our view here is, um, you know, our current expectation is we still avoid one modestly, but I think it, people, um, whether we modestly, whether we narrowly avoid a narrow recession or have a narrow, like a, a shallow recession, I think it's, I think the range of outcomes is relatively tight around that band. So, you know, our current expectation is we'll, we'll, just, um, we'll just about avoid it. But I, I, I think, you know, our, our expectation is rates. We have one more hike here. And then we'll be on pause as the, as the Fed watches the data come through and really determines, amongst other things, what the um, longer term, what the uh, impact of the credit tightening is going to have from the U.S. banking system. Yeah, let's double down on that because we saw this big sale of First Republic today to J.P. Yeah. Morgan. Yeah. What does this mean? That is one fewer bank in the American financial system. How yeah. much does that uh, tighten conditions for the country? Um, look, if you think about uh, what's going on here, you have... Um, uh, we, first of all, we think that was relatively isolated, that that was the, the weak link in the chain, and it's good that that's been resolved because it takes the uncertainty off the table. If you actually look at the rest of the smaller banks, in terms of, a, from a liquidity perspective, they're holding up okay. But what I do think is uh, likely to happen with these banks over the next few months, quarters, years, they're all going to be subject to higher uh, capital requirements, higher liquidity requirements, greater regulation. Um, on top of that, they are going to face problems in their loan book. I don't think it'll be a big bang. I think it'll be more like, you know, a multitude of issues that come up, especially in their office portfolios. And none of those things will be uh, a death knell for the banks, but it'll just impact profitability and add to that the fact that you're seeing, you know, net interest margins generally narrow for these banks. So all of those things are going to point to tighter financial conditions, both for corporate and in particular real estate credit, where they've been a huge provider of capital to the U.S. Uh, uh, economy. Now, Goldman Sachs, your business actually has a lot of movement when it comes to the flow of money market funds. You have some of the largest yeah. in the world. So how much competition are traditional investments seeing into that money market world? Look, it, it, it's been incredible, actually. You know, money markets is one of those uh, kind of sleepy areas that nobody pays attention to for years at a time, and then it becomes interesting at points of stress. And what you know, we've seen something like five hundred billion dollars flow out of the banks into these money market funds over the last few months. You know, we ourselves in the weeks around uh, SVB saw more than $50 billion flowing in. I would say that started to moderate at this point. 
and I think on a go-forward basis, uh, I'd say both the net flows out of the banks into the money market funds, and then uh, QT is also going to start having an impact on that. So we, we think that's it's been a great run for the money market funds, but it seems like the flows are starting to moderate at this point. Well, that's interesting. What about private credit now? A lot of people don't realize that Goldman Sachs, the business that you run, yeah. the private assets within the firm yeah. are almost the size of KKR. It's a large private asset manager in itself. But is there really that much demand, and I'm asking as somebody who's a liquid credit manager as well as a private credit manager, for private credit? I think there's tremendous interest and demand. I think it's a great diversifier for the portfolio. And interestingly, although one might think that the fact that the rates of return available in the public markets are higher and therefore it might reduce the interest. What it's meant is because these are floating rate instruments, the nominal rates of return on private credit are getting up to a point where people are willing to increasingly interested in making it part of their strategic asset allocation, whereas before it may have been more of a tactical view. So I think just structurally you're going to see more demand for private credit from, uh, from a full range of investors, insurance, pensions and endowments, and then I also think um, uh, high net worth individuals and, and retail channels as well. Where are the cracks? When there's that much demand, you can start to worry about whether things are getting frothy. Yeah, um, that's always something to, to watch over time. Uh, uh, look, I, uh, it still feels like we're very, very early in that cycle, and right now that is displacing, um, or, or taking up the, um, the, the baton, essentially, because the banks have been less willing to invest, uh, to, to lend, the, the capital markets are less freely available. So there's still plenty of opportunity for them to, to, to deploy that money. It, it still feels like we're in the early innings of the evolution of private credit. You see some of the largest asset allocators in the world who still have very low levels, de minimis levels of allocation towards this asset class. And I think that will, that will continue to flow. And look, people are going to have to be prudent around how they manage risk. And I think that's why you have to find managers who've been doing this for a very long time and seen multiple credit cycles and work through deals when they go wrong. Well, what about the geopolitical risk you're talking about? That was kind of the third thing you mentioned from your world tour as far as areas of concern. Is what you're saying, the concern in Washington about the debt ceiling, the front and center of that concern, or are there other things entirely? Look, I think on that issue, um, it, our expectation is it will be resolved. Like many of these things, you may have to go to the edge before it gets resolved. There'll be some increased volatility around the maturities once it becomes clear when that time is. We're currently expecting around the end of June, um, but that, that ultimately gets resolved. No, I, I think on the geopolitics, it's more about where you invest around the world. And, um, you know, uh, people have different views on China, for example. Some are very, very, very favorably disposed to it right now, others less so. Um, so I, I think it's more like flows of, flows of money around the world uh, is what I was referring to. Really uh, quickly, within a, the next minute or so, what is your view for 2024? If you have to make it through a recession, what comes out on top? What comes out on top? Look, the way things are set up right now, we think fixed income and in particular IG, munis are offering great rates of return. Agency mortgages also offering interesting rates of return, more technicals to be aware of there uh, because of the FDIC selling there. But we think that's going to perform well in a low rate vol environment with moderating growth. And that's going to offer terrific uh, uh, total rate of returns. Uh, and, and then look across private markets. We really see, we talked about private credit, but we, we, we see tremendous opportunities across the private market platform. We have such a broad uh, portfolio of, um, of investment opportunities. Infrastructure is starting to offer really interesting rates of return. Take private opportunities, platform builds. Um, so I, I think private markets, again, we're still in the early innings of allocation towards these things.